Sammy, two for two. Start it off. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, to Mindless Horror Podcast Presents Scare Actor Appreciation Month. I messed like, up the intro already. I like how he freaking <laughs> looks at me the entire time. Yeah, this will be our eighth episode today. We are blessed with the opportunity uh, to have two wonderful scare actors from the uh, scariest place on earth, aka Not Scary Farm. We got Brandon hey. and Corey, aka Brand- Claptrap. Oh, you guys want to introduce your guys yourself here and, uh, you know, let the audience know who we got on this show today. As far as where you guys been in, maze-wise, uh, who you guys played, that way they get a little idea of who you guys are. Uh, well, I was a Soul Eater and Paranormal Inc. Uh, I look like Groot, so I guess AKA Groot. Nice. Groot. <laughs> yeah. How many times did you get that? Uh, so many times. At least 50 times throughout the... The month. I wouldn't say nearly as much as the cat. Uh, what was it's it? The kind of wampus. Cat wampus and freaking origins. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, with, the, with the big shoes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, every time, dude, I'd walk by and be like, "Groot." It was literally Groot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't find out it was the cat wampus until we did one of these podcasts, and I'm like, Are you "Serious? That's a cat wampus?" <laughs> I've been calling it Groot this entire time. The guy probably hates me. He <laughs> wasn't. He wasn't a cat wampus. He was. Uh, he was a lawsuit waiting to happen. Exactly. Yeah. It was like someone gonna get sued over Disney's here. getting around there. I know, right? <laughs> well, I mean, if you watch The Hanging, Disney should be suing for all of The Hanging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, dude, like, like some, some rep at Disney has, their ears are burning, they're like biting oh, yeah. their tongue, like something's happening, like they're getting that spidey sense. Oh, yeah. Like, they, they just, just watch this show, they're like, oh, thank you for reminding us. Yeah, that's right. Nuts. <laughs> that's right, our list, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, Nuts. Um, We've been so busy, with the, so busy with the launch of Disney Plus that we forgot that we got to be suing Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> that's true, right? <laughs> Two more days, man, is this recording? Two more days, um, court. Court. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so um, I was, uh, it's kind of complicated, I was originally the sculptor in Waxworks, and then I kind of was elected to become the curator, I kind of filled in for a curator, so I kind of was a sculptor curator for cra- uh, for Crackworks. <laughs> Waxworks. <laughs> Clapworks. Yeah, hey, that's, that's a new one. Uh, yeah. Clapworks. Well, okay. I w- cla- <laughs> Clapworks. Clapworks. Clap, Clapworks. Clap Crackworks. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, we're always at all of our uh, cast day and B, we're always like going you know, crazy on the guests. So I guess Crackworks could be a thing. Crackworks. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. 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 a new name. So, how long have you been both in the scare acting industry? This is actually my first year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Rookie. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Rookie. Yeah. The, now, I gotta ask you this because a lot of we've been interviewing a lot of the street actors, and they say usually first year best to go in mazes. How was your first year in a maze? Brilliant, actually. It was a lot of fun. It's just having the freedom to run around my room, and then there, there's also like the takeaway from freedom because you're stuck. You're stuck in like a little area, but if you don't see it that way, you're fine. Yeah. If you feel trapped, then you're gonna be trapped. But if you're if you're able to work around it and run around through the maze, and the the good part about my maze is there's so many exits everywhere that even if I was in a certain room for the li- the library per se, an example, um, I would be in the library, and then there's a room next to it, and then the exit, I can run around to the other area where the morgue is and scare people two times. So wow, so it's had, a little bit extra. So but you kind of had freedom to go throughout the maze too. Wow, that's yeah, cool. so I didn't feel trapped at all. Like I was able to just run everywhere. And the laser room's so huge. If you guys ever been through there, there's so much room in there to run through guests and everything. I didn't, I didn't feel like I was stuck in a room. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that maze is definitely, definitely an interesting one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you start, of course it's supposed to be they're broadcasting a paranormal TV show and then all hell breaks loose in that. Walk nice plug. So, yeah, yeah, nice little plug for the tour, right? Um, Court Waxworks was a new maze this year. How how was that? Uh, that it was a lot of fun. I mean, um, I, you know, originally I was put in the creation room with the centipede. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone called it the human centipede. Yeah. You know? Wow, you were pretty far in then because you made your way to the front. Now. Well, well, that's the thing. Um, it's kind of, I mean, it was sort of a, a journey to get to the front, but. Um, he I, earned it. Well, yeah, I guess I earned this, the privilege of going to the front Definitely. because the directors would go through every night and they kind of saw me doing my thing in the creation room. Um, I draw their attention toward the giant creation, and people just—it's funny the the guests all have a pattern of looking. They walk in, they're like, "Ooh, look at that!" Yep. All right, what's the next room? <laughs> so always this pattern. So I worked around their head movements, and I'm like, "Okay, so I'm going to swing around them, I'm going to stay real low, and then I'll come up toward their throats." <laughs> and it just got, so it, it worked every time, it worked like a charm. So yeah. I'd be like, look at my art, look. And they go look, and then I'd, I'd get everybody else that's looking another way and that sort of thing. But yeah, so I mean, um, 
that was a lot of fun because you know you can explore the space. Yeah. I could I could interact with the beekeeper, and he was awesome. He just yeah. he was really good at just staying perfectly still. People thought he was a mannequin, oh, and he just yeah. pop out at them and stuff. And I'd be reaching through the through the through the the bars like I was a prisoner of something or of some sort, or you know, or looking at you know my my next victims and you know my newest installments to the exhibit. Definitely. Um, but yeah, like, but thankfully, uh, having the freedom to run around in that room, similar to kind of how Brandon was able to just run around, um, you really know get to see the habits of the of the guests and like exploit it and like yeah. scare the chef, yeah, scare yeah. the hell out of them. Yeah. And um, so yeah, the directors were seeing that and they're like, you know what? How about you go ahead and try the front? You know. So like, there they gave me the the ticket booth and. Um, they said to just kind of you can go out into the front of the facade they didn't really tell me how far so I kind of took that a little bit further and like I, I would go into the queue line yeah and but that's where a lot of magic happened and that's where we met you right, right. so yeah. it's like, but there's a lot of magic happened in that line because you know uh, guests just don't expect a, a, a creature to be lurking around among them. They think that's kind of like they're safer. Right, right. Yeah. And they're like, a lot of the reactions were, already? <laughs> like, so, yeah, yeah, like, oh my god, like, you know, so, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, like, I, I can just say, just in general, being in a maze um, for, like, a first-timer, I mean, I've heard from a lot of veterans that being mazed is kind of like a, not the best thing in the world, but compared to where I've, other places I've been, like, Mazes at knots, you get a lot of freedom to, to be creative. Definitely. And I think that's actually really awesome. Yeah. So I think, I think uh, that, that event, event overall, too, they, they give you a lot of freedom to just kind of, even if you're going for the street role, you know what I mean? Like, right. they let you come in and kind of, if you're going for, like, Ghost Town in specific, if you come in with, like, the character, they'll give you, and if they approve it, they'll give you that freedom to design that character and work on that character, yeah. which I think is an amazing thing at, the, at this event because you don't see a lot of events that literally give you the freedom to do that. Horror Nights, you go over to Horror Nights, I mean, all the characters just, they already have them kind of made and designed, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's already stable. I mean, you go to uh, an event like Queen Mary, I don't know how that works. I wonder if it's the same as Nuts. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to find out. have to find that one out. Because yeah, it, it, it kind of looks like it'd be the same. It's like, they, you know, this is the essential theme, come up with your own character. Yeah, I mean, it seems like uh, Dark Harbor is doing really well. There's a lot of good things being said about it, especially yeah. this year. Yeah, I went twice. It was pretty fun, actually. Yeah. I did one of the, uh, I believe, one of the the main creators behind the mazes at Knotts is working on uh, Dark Harbor. Uh, that's yeah. what I heard. John Cook. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah. What is From play. That? What isn't that guy working on? He's got hands. He's got hands. That, that guy's done. That, that guy does Knotts. He does Queen Mary, Ellie Haunted Hayride. Damn. He does stuff in Orlando, Darker, uh, Dark Dark Horizon, Horizon that just opened up this year. Uh, he probably does other little stuff that are like year-round stuff or just little other haunts that you know you don't see at other parts but that guy is just got a handful on top of that, that the guy's in a freaking band too yeah, which you can find his music on spotify <laughs> winds of plague winds of plague winds shameless plague. plug yeah. yeah oh nice it's, it's like, like a it's one, one of those kind of bands where you're just it's, it's like, like one of those heavy bands which i thought was pretty cool uh, so court you said you've done other events what other ones have you done oh uh i did uh horror nights for two years in 2017 and 2018 and before that, I worked at a home haunt uh, under R Rotten Apple Productions, and they do uh, they do Scare LA, uh, Midsummer Scream. They contribute. They're they're basically a part of a group called Cal Haunts. Okay. Or Cal Haunt. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, so I uh, had the privilege of of, uh, of meeting them at Scare LA one uh, one time, and uh, basically I'd been a guest at their haunted house, and I was a big fan. And I asked if they needed help building it, and you know, yeah. I mean, so I helped them build, and that was in 2016. And I also was a scare actor in their maze, just you know, helping out and stuff. Um, so, uh, and then before that, I did a home haunt at my place for 10 years. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, I was like, you know, mostly like tarp wall, you know, tarp walls, uh, black lights, strobe lights, yeah. and we would dig like this giant grave and put like a chain link fence over it and have fog coming out of it and have the guests walk over that. It was extremely unsafe. Oh, but yeah. it was it was also scary and fun. And, you know, they were a lot of fun. We like to think it was it had charm. <laughs> it had you know? charm. Yeah. So how was your experience between like horror nights and, and not scary farm? Like, what would you say the biggest differences are? Uh, well, right as off, a scare actor. Yeah, right off the bat, uh, with knots is freedom, freedom to explore your character, freedom to explore the space, to kind of push the envelope and see what you can get away with as far as like how you can. 
you just can you can scare differently and try different tactics on any given night and explore your space and really kind of stretch the boundaries of said space. Yeah. As long as you're being safe, of course. You know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like knots is a huge thing. A huge plus is is the freedom. Um, and I'd say I guess like difference if I can talk about horror nights. Um, uh, I'd say they kind of prepare the scare actors across the board for a certain quality of scare um, because they audition every single one of them even if they're being put in a maze there's a kind of uh, there's a stringent audition process yeah. and um, the idea is like you know they're kind of putting every they're putting everybody through the gauntlet mm -hmm. and uh, so you kind of see you, you can see that across the board even like in mazes you're getting a certain intensity that I think uh, Horror Nights uh, it does really well yeah um, but yeah, I mean, right off the bat, I just say that the freedom is a huge thing with, with not as a scary actor. Definitely. What made you want to transition from Horror Nights to, to Scary Farm? Um, I've always been a huge fan of Knots. Um, I've been going to Knots since I was a kid, and uh, it would be a tradition with me and my friends to kind of go, and we get inspiration from Knots, and we take that home to our home haunt, and we kind of incorporate it. Back when, like, shaking cans oh, with yeah. change inside or nails yeah. was, a, was a huge thing for them. Uh, we'd be like, oh, that's really cool. Like, we'd do little things like that. Yeah. Um, so, like, uh, I was a huge fan of Knots, and I always thought, like, the fog, like, the ambience, the lights, the music, uh, everything that Knots had to offer really encapsulated the feeling of Halloween. It was actually creepy and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, Horror Nights was close, and my, my friends were going there, and they were like, hey, let's try it, you know, so I went and did that. But... Um, finally this year, I was just like, you know, I've always been a huge fan. I want to give it a shot, you know, let's see what, what it's all about. And, you know, the drive was kind of like the hard part because it's about 40 miles with some change, uh, yeah. depending on traffic, to get here every day. So it's almost 100 miles of round trip every every yeah. night. So, yeah. But, but yeah, like, you know what, being a big fan, let's try it. Let's see how it goes. And, and man, I'm so glad that I did. It's just, it's it's really amazing. Yeah, can, can we expect, expect both of you guys, guys back next year, hopefully? hopefully? Yes, if I think yeah. so. <laughs> he actually convinced me to go this really? year because yeah. every year I've been busy or distracted with work or I always had something going on and I've never been able to do it, but it sounded fun. And then this year, um, he was like, let's try it again. And he asked me the final time and I was like, you know what, let's go, fuck it. Like, yeah. I'll, try, I'll try it. And we ended up doing it and loving it and I'm so glad, thankful Yo. that we just we went through the whole thing and it was such an experience. We kind of approached it like a road trip. Hey, you want to do this? Yeah. Yeah, let's go yeah. cross country. Let's hit the road. It was <laughs> fun. It was so more a vacation, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean imagine, imagine if you were still, still like, like back, back in the day, day when we used to have like camp battles. I wish I just used to do that these days. Like, insane. I, I've, I've heard, heard stories of people like camping out just so they can get, get an audition. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. And, and now the, the whole process has changed with it. I think they do it, I think, multiple days now. Multiple, yeah, and they're like scheduled. Like, like you can schedule, schedule the appointment now. You can come in, and they only take so many number that day. They, they try, try to get through everybody because they, they know. There's, there's probably new talent that wants to come in, like yourself, you. They don't want to come in and just try to kill game and bring something new to the event, which we saw that a lot with. There was a ton of, from what I heard, there was a ton of new people this year. And I saw the energy there. I saw the people that wanted to be there. They gave 110%. Yeah, I mean, uh, for us, uh, we actually missed the auditions completely. Like, like we, we tried to, I tried to talk to Brandon uh, at uh, Midsummer Scream. Yeah. And hey, the, the auditions are full. Is there any chance, you know, we can hop in on that? Because, you know, we just were like, hey, let's do this. It was kind of spontaneous. Like, honestly, at Midsummer, I was like, you know what? I want to do knots. I want to do knots. Because we saw their panel. Mm -hmm. we're like, man, they're just so freaking cool. Like, they're just so good at what they do. Yeah. I want to be a part of that. So, like, um, I, con I, got a, I, I talked to him, and he's like, yeah, man, sorry. Like they're all full. Like uh, the best way you can do is open hire. So you just go show up to the talent or to the uh, what is it? The employee employment center. Employment center, yeah. And you, you get you you sign up for a time slot, and basically the best you can get is like in uh, like uh, an interview. Yeah. Like when you're open hire. I don't know if you guys know that process, but when like all the auditions are done, yeah, um, they're still opening. So you go to open hire, and then you just get an interview, and then they just kind of put you in a maze based on that. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's how me and Brandon got our gig. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it was pretty easy, you know, thankfully, but, you know, it was kind of like, 
the way I like to see it is when when we play, they put us in our roles. At least for me, when they put me in wax arts, I'm like, I didn't get to audition, but I'm going to audition for them every night. I just want them to know, like, because I really want streets, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, but yeah, like so. Every, he, every, you, he had a really good chance <laughs> at auditioning because they they saw him working in his room, like you said earlier. And you went to the front, like from the back of the maze to literally outside. Yeah, outside yeah. <laughs> you worked your way there, and you showed them what you could do, and that's why they love you. Like that, that was really cool to me. Like, I love that. It was fun because they, they kind of gave me my own little scare zone. Yeah. No one else was able to like really kind of work the queue line like yeah. they let me do. So going back, uh, what were your you guys both went to Midsummer this year? Uh, I did. Yeah. You did. Yeah. So Core, what were your what were your did you have a good time at Midsummer? Oh man, yeah, it was a it was a lot of fun. We were out all weekend. We brushed elbows, yeah, you know. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We went probably all the same panels you did. did. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you guys go to uh, God, uh, Urban Decay? Is it Urban Decay? Decay Brigade. The ones with the slide? No, 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 no. It was uh, a panel. It was oh, a panel Urban, where you yeah. go into this room where it goes completely dark. And then like you have these, it's like a, an adult theater production. Like Oh no. It's very grotesque. It's it's That's very cool. it's really cool. Like the idea is like, well, you go into this panel and like and then they shut off all the lights where you cannot see a thing. It's just pitch black in there. And you have these performers who a lot of the time will, you know, they'll pell around naked and they'll just like, you know, come up with these really like like almost interpretive dance but like you know, theater acting, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah, they definitely mess with your uh, expectations of like, you know, of like what a theater performance is going to be, and like they put push the envelope with like just just horror and comedy and just just really dark subject matter, uh, like torture things like that. It's like it's pretty dark, but uh, oh. I, I believe it's called Urban Decay. I, I, I yeah. I don't know. I didn't hear about. Oh that. no, Urban Death. Urban, Urban Death. Death. That's Urban it. Urban Death. Yeah. I may have missed. The, what would you guys check out? We, we were busy. Yeah, we, we were really busy. We, 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 we had a whole like, schedule. schedule shit we had to do. Like, 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 like this, this time, this time, this time <laughs> we can go through the Hall of Shadows, but by this time we have to be at this panel because we know it's going to be packed. We did Horn Eyes panel, Queen Mary panel, Knott's panel, Honor Air panel. Then we filmed like three podcasts. Just kind of like a little corner. Because we couldn't get a podcast. Because uh, I got another episode just so you can do podcasts. Podcast. We couldn't get, get one of those because um, it wouldn't be too late from the last time we applied. So, so we just set up a corner. And Robert Cameron is a little podcast studio. There's one. There's one. Online with a lot of friends. Got to meet a lot of people. Yeah, it was cool. 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 It Oh, I didn't mean to scare you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the lights that came on. That was oh, a scary wait, wait. part. <laughs> That's what scares all of us, man. Yeah, it scared me too. Um, <laughs> so what was what was you guys' favorite scare this year? Either like <laughs> tactics. Yes, please. All right. All right, go for it. Uh, le- legit first day. Uh, unexpectedly, cause, because this is my first time, so I wasn't expecting to get like really good scares. Yeah. But first day, I... Uh, you, I don't know if you guys ever walked through the laser room, but how the laser room is set up is the laser is coming from the top straight down, and, it, and you have to walk through it like you're going through a portal. And then the smoke and everything, and it's dark, you can't see anything. So literally all you can see is the laser ring, and that's where my scares come in. Nice. I popped my face out of the smoke and through the laser and uh, as this couple was walking through it. And you know, a typical couple, like, guy walking around like he's all cool and he's he's protecting his girl and the girl's holding his arm uh, like on on this side so her face is right here yeah and they're walking through like expecting something to pop out because you know it's gonna happen but what I like to do is just wait because because like, they know it's coming but I, I make them wait for it like the intimidation just builds up last second before they walk through the laser that's when I make my move and like it's either the hand or the face, but in this initial case, I put my face through and I went like this, <laughs> and like, right in his face. And he was looking around because you can't see anything. And like as I popped up, he sees me and he's like, "Oh fuck!" He looks to his right, mind you, girlfriend's face is right here. He looks at her, one or two seconds, and then, boom, punched her in the face. 
<laughs> and she screamed because she got oh punched in the face. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she didn't even see me. <laughs> oh my god. He had, he had time to think about it. He's, He's like, like, I'm, I'm either, either getting kicked, kicked out, punching the scare actor, or I'm going to face a lawsuit and punch my girlfriend. It's, it's the funniest thing, though, because I came in on the, and this side. His hand is free, like, all of this is free. He could have totally just punched me. But instead of punching me, he looks over and goes, bop, clocks her in the face, like, right on the nose. So I don't even... Oh, my yes. initial case was like, I was laughing, but I was like... I was in shock. I was like, what did I just do? Like, I've never seen that before. That is probably the funniest story we've heard on this show so far. I was scared. I don't know how one does that. Um, wow. After that, I went ham. I was like, dude, if I could do that, I want to see what else I can do. And like, if I could make people punch their freaking girls in the face, then. Scaring them to the point of domestic abuse. Like, not that that's funny, but just, Jesus. I don't know well, if they're still like, together. <laughs> Probably not. That's probably that was it. That's a break. The whole argument on the way out. Why the fuck you punch me? No, yeah, because we've heard, and it all comes back to control. Like we've heard, we've heard characters this season on the streets. Like one girl goes, "Oh, you made me spill my beer," and then the one goes, "I didn't make you do anything. You did it yourself. You know, that's all you. That's all how you control stuff. That goes to that. It's like." I didn't make you do anything. You did that on your own, dude. That was all you, man. I had none. Yeah, I scared you, but how you how you choose to react and control that that's all on you, dude. That's true. Yeah. What about you, Court? Oh man, it's a tough. How do you wait? Let's just say this. How do you top that? How do you? Uh, I don't. No, um, great. Probably not that. No. Well, no. I, I did top it actually. Um, oh my god! <laughs> how do you top that? Uh, I think it was like Halloween night. I'm pretty sure it was Halloween <laughs> night or the night before, but um, I I scared this girl so bad that oh. she, the the blackout heard her say, um, <laughs> "You made me piss myself." That's what the blackout told me because I, I didn't hear what she said. Yeah. But from the smell. <laughs> oh no! I scared her so bad that she shat herself. Because there's no way that was a fart. There's no way. It smelled like there's a reek yeah. for like 20 minutes in the maze. And I'm stuck in the room. That's when I'm like, fuck this. I don't want to be here. I ran around the room. And I was like, I was in another room. I was gone. I was like, I'm not going to sit here. Let's tell so the blackout. Can I get uh, some air fresheners in there, like, real quick? <laughs> like I was stuck in the corner. Can get some kitty litter? I was like, I understand this is supposed to smell like death in here, but can we make it smell like freaking roses for a little, just a little bit? <laughs> could we get a flashlight to check? Could we get a flashlight? Uh, I could just see it, too, because when I scared her, she she did those one those things where they're walking around, and they're like, huh! <laughs> she sat there for a second. And like she was just like, I'm not gonna move, I'm not gonna move. And I was scaring her, so she was like, Oh no <laughs> So I knew. I was like, dude, there's no way that I was pissed. Like no probably both. both. Oh, with that boy. Wow. That's, uh, that's yeah, so you probably have you are now the person who has the two best stories on the show so far. Two, two, man. You have you have good ones though. Yeah. Uh, mine are like Hallmark Channel moments. They're not like Hallmark what? Channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you, so, so you, so you did, did do something that I read on your post about a uh, little kid who started like really crying and stuff. Yeah. But you actually, actually cheered him up at the end, which I thought was a really cool thing. That's a sweet story. We, 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 we had a full, it was a full, went for a full circle. Mm -hmm. you, got a, you got a special pin for that one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, the director's, uh, the director's badge, they gave out three this season. So I was one of the lucky three, I guess. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, because I think that's cool, because there, 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 there was a big issue this season where, and I do agree with this at some, some points, points, but it all depends on how, how well the kids can take the event. But there was a big thing I heard that this year, a big thing that went viral that, you know, there, there was a, a character at Horror Nights who oh, yeah. he scared those kids so much, and the mom was just kind of like, and the argument was, why do you bring your kids to the thing? You know the rules say, you know, 13 are over, and everybody was kind of getting mad at the mom for that. I, I think, think it all depends on how well the kids... Because I've seen five-year-olds walk in there and have the time of their lives. I really have. I'm like, I've seen freaking five-year-olds go and just want to play with the werewolves. I'm like, dude, they're trying to kill you and you want to go play with them? I was like, you're so much more tough than I was at that age. Oh, yeah, Sam, yeah. I was like... So, yeah, I've seen kids go in there like having the time of their lives. But I've also seen kids go in there, you know, they'll have fun for a little bit, but then they get scared because they realize what's happening. And then you had a story, though, where... Was it you scared the kid? 
or like, like he, he was already scared going into the maze, maze or what happened? happened? Um, okay, so it's it's like that's what I mean by it was full circle. Like, yeah. um, so I was I was doing my thing. I come out there like I wait for the fog to kick up in the front of the facade, yeah. and I come darting out at this this family. They're at the front of the queue line. I run at them full speed, like I'm gonna mow them down, and you know <laughs> I'm going at their throats, you know, and then you know so. Uh, so I scare the family. They all stagger back, and this kid just drops to his knees, and he's just like shriveling, you know, shaking, and he's crying. He's 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 done with it. So it's just um, so uh, I, I felt really bad. So you know, I go up to him, and you know, I, I'm trying to cheer him up, and I'm say, you know, in character, I'm like, you know, you shouldn't be ashamed of being scared. There's no, there's nothing wrong with being scared. We're, we're here to entertain you. It's like you and I were friends. We're friends now. Like you know. Give him a fist pump, yeah. and uh, and I say, you, it's like you believe me, right? We're friends, right? And he's just like, yeah. I'm like all my all those monsters in there, they're your friend. They're my friends. They're here to entertain you. That's not so bad, is it? And he's just like, I guess not. So like you know, we're getting to the front of the maze, and he's just like, no, 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 no. He cannot do it. He he's just like he he won't go in. Yeah. And his parents, they're disappointed. They're just like, ah oh, man, because you know they want to go inside. Yeah. They want to see what what's going on there. Yeah. And it's so, like. I can't convince the kid to go, so I'm like, you know what? In character, I'm just like, you know what? You guys go ahead. I'll watch your kid. We'll meet you at the exit. I'm like, you sure? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You know, it's like I'll, I'll watch him. And the kid's still scared. I'm like, here, take my hand. And he's like, and so yeah, he sheepishly takes my hand, and I walk him to the exit. And he's still crying, like he's scared. You know, he just won't go into waxworks. And so I stoop down to eye level. And I'm like, what's your name? Tyler. I was like, Tyler. See any of these people in this line? You pick them. You pick whoever you want, and I'll go scare them for you. How's that sound? He's like, really? Yeah, really. You pick, you know, I'll, I'll go scare them for you. And I don't know, just some magic that the kid instilled in me. Whoever I went to, I was scaring the daylights out of them. <laughs> and like people were falling down, yeah. and just like literally wherever I was going, just down like bowling pins. Just yeah. people were falling. And I, as I'm coming back, now who next? He's like, that one. I go and dart after him, like, yeah! I'm like, just scaring the people left and right. And I'm like, all right, watch this. And I point to the crowd, like, beyond them, to this imaginary person. I'm like, you there, in the Abe Lincoln hat. How long did that beard take to grow? And everyone's like, a Abe Lincoln, what? And like, whoop, I'm like, run up to their faces. They don't realize I'm there. And then they see me, oh, shit. So they all fall down. And this, and I, every time I'm going back, this kid, his tears are drying up. His face, he's got the biggest smile on his face. Yeah. And what? So he's 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 having the time of his life. And so as I'm coming back, and he's all cool and happy, the parents come out of the maze, and we all just rejoice. They're like, oh my god, what happened? You know? And I'm like, now see Tyler, this is fun, right? So he's scaring, he's fun. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, like it. we're all just having a good time. Yeah. And like, see Tyler, you're now braver ten than you were ten minutes ago. But um, wow. <laughs> that's such a great story. I mean, when I when I read it on Instagram, I was like, this is something that needs to be talked about because that that further proves that these guys are not all assholes. No one, no <laughs> one's an asshole going into these events. Okay, they're here to do their job. But yeah. when you when you get people like him who take the time to just go out of his way and yeah. do something like that, that's fantastic, dude. Yeah, I and I applaud you for that. that. It goes back to that motto. So you're there to scare, and if you can't scare, you're there to entertain them. Right. If you can't entertain them, at least entertain yourself. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you did a good job of at least falling to, well, I'm not going to be able to scare this kid because that's got to the level now. <laughs> I well, right, right, right. I'm going to entertain them at least. Well, the thing is, like, going from, the thing is, I scared the, I scared their family, like, and I scared the crap out of that kid. And then, you know, to be able to, you know, bring him out of that funk and then get him laughing and happy. Like, that was my goal. I was like, all right, I want to make this right. I scared yeah. him, but I want him to have a good memory, too. You know? Definitely. Yeah. But um, if, if you don't mind, like, there's a kind of a story that relates. Yeah. Just because of the ending, I feel like um, it's noteworthy in the sense that it's kind of, again, almost kind of a hallmark moment. Yeah. But I do have a good, uh, actual, one of my favorite scares after that, you know what No, no, quick. no. We want to hear all your guys' stories. That's why we're doing this. Cool. Just to hear stories. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. But, uh, yeah. So, 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 um, it was a, again a very similar story. Um, I see this family, and I'm just like, I do my whole stick. I'm, I, I'm looking at the queue line. I, I constantly trick people with this. There it was right next to Ghost Rider. There's a fence. Yeah, yeah. I would come up with. It'd be you in the Abe Lincoln hat. How long did that beard take to grow? <laughs> I'm like, you there? A tutu? <laughs> really? Who brings a tutu? Who wears a tutu to this event? Everyone's like, a tutu? A tutu? What? And, like, <laughs> and then they, they all do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah, so 
a lot of the comments I get in line is like, "What? How is he getting here? Is he teleporting?" Like, <laughs> they just, you know, I'm just playing with their expectations. Yeah. You know? They don't know where I'm at. I'm like constantly going around. I was calling under the queue line, like on my all fours, just like like <laughs> like going up to people. Like I had rabies, you know. Yeah. In the queue line, I had rabies, but like. So in this, I know my third stick with the same thing, like you know, getting their attention elsewhere. Yeah. I'd be like, you, sir. Like I call the security, I'm like shine the light on that person. You sir, you cannot be behind the fence. How'd you even get there, <laughs> sir? You cannot be there. And everyone's like, what, what, huh? And like so yeah. So I did it to this family, and like they all just fall down, like you know, this like and they, a bunch of kids, and this one little girl particularly, she's just crying. Yeah. And again, I'm like, oh man, hey, listen, all right, look. Try, think of it this way. This is all supposed to be fun. When you get scared, you get it's fun. You're supposed to laugh. Look, let's try it. You get scared, laugh. Try laughing. Just laugh at the laugh at the danger. Laugh at being scared. And then like she was just trying to understand. And I'm like, all right, like let's. You're you're tough, right? You can handle this, right? And she's like, uh, no. I'm like, yes, you can. I'm like, look, come on, raw. Let me hear your best raw. And she's like, uh, no, like you scare me, raw. And then she's like. Rawr! I'm like yes, Rawr! it's like so she scares me right. Yeah. So I fall, on my, I fall down. And I'm like that's pretty good, that's pretty good. One more, you know. <laughs> it's egging her on and stuff. Again, it was a situation where she was she was getting pumped up to go into yeah. the maze, but she was too scared. And I was like, what time is it? And and then they're like, oh, it's uh, not, uh, nine uh, nine fifty something like that. It was almost the turn of the hour. And I was like, okay, I have ten more minutes. And I'm like, if you can wait ten minutes, I'll go through with you. And that was that sound. You can hide behind me. It's like, you say, and then she's like, oh, okay, like, I can do that. You know, like, you know, she'll go through if I go through. Yeah. But then basically I was kind of going around scaring people and like doing it for her and like, hey, watch this. Like, I'm going to go scare some people. And I kept checking in on them. Like, hey, how are we doing? Are we, are we ready to go in yet? And then like, they'd be kind of building up to it. But then before I was off, the, one of the guest control comes through and it's like, you know, I'll go through with them. And I was like, and I turned to the family. I'm like, are you sure? Are you, you know, are you, are you good to go? Because I'll wait, I'll go with you guys. You wait like a couple more minutes. And then, the, but then the girl was like, you know what? No, I can do it. She's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So she goes with the family and they all go through together. And so I'm st I'm just going around doing my thing, scaring everybody. And the thing is about the entrance to Waxworks, there's like the queue line, a fat queue line, and then the exit's on the way on the opposite side. Yeah. yeah. So I'm about to get off my, you know, my set. And um, then suddenly I see this, this family of people come running at me. And the, the girls each one by one came up and hugged me. Nice. And I'm just like, oh, like, oh, come on. You made it. Yeah, that's so awesome. It's like man. brings a lone it. tear to my eye. Like, oh, yeah, man. Nice. It's moments like that you should be applauding yourself because, like, I don't see a lot of characters that go out of their way to do stuff like that. And I think that's really cool because it gives kids the, to get them a meaning of don't be scared. This is a fun thing. You know, you're, supposed, you're here to be, have fun and get entertained. And, I think it really opens up the bravery of, you're opening up the bravery to kids who don't want to go through, who want to go home, but their parents, you know, they paid the money, they want to be here. And as as you're doing stuff like that, these kids are starting to realize, well, yeah, this is fun. I am having fun, you know? I This is, I'm having a good time. People like you are just like opening these kids' minds like, yeah, maybe this isn't, it's, it shouldn't be as scary as I make it out. It should be scary mixed with a laugh at the end. Right. Which I think is awesome. And that's, that's the one thing I, that, like, specifically with her as well, I was saying, hey, you know, and think of it, look, you are you are braver than you were 10 minutes ago, right? And she was like, yes, like, she, yeah. was, she was, she believed it. Yeah. And everyone was rejoicing, we're just, like, having a good time. Like, she, she felt, she, like, she, like, graduated, you know, yeah. or she leveled up in that moment. I think it's people like you two that make, <coughs> make people want to come back more and more. You know, you got people like you who are, like I said, making kids brave enough to want to go through these mazes and then now that they went through the one, they want to just go through them all now. Yeah. You got people like you who are scaring the crap out of people, literally. <laughs> and I think that's hilarious because I look forward to that in a, in a maze where if you can get me, I applaud you. Because um, me, I love going through them and I love just looking at looking at everything I love looking at the scenes of how everything was detailed and everything but then there's that moment where I'll get thrown off guard and then someone gets me and I'm just like oh shit they got me uh, I think that happened a couple of times they happened once in Paranormal this year right where they had like a big stilt guy hiding in the yeah, uh, dark so. oh yeah <laughs> and I didn't see him and he like came down on me I'm like oh shit they I'm changed like, levels now. yeah he changed levels real quick and I was like oh okay yeah that's uh 
They have him in the darkest room, and I remember him telling me, like, a lot of guests don't even know he's there. <coughs> yeah, and no, because I... scare him, and they're, they're, they're looking down the whole time so they don't see him. Yeah. <laughs> like, he literally well, has to, like, almost touch them. I think at that point, it was so dark, I could barely see where I was going, so I was kind of trying to look, <laughs> and then he dropped down to my level, and mind you, he's only probably, like, two more feet higher than I am. I mean, but still, he, like, dropped down at my level, and I'm like, oh, shit, dude, you got me. I was like, I didn't even see you. Where were you hiding? I thought that was hilarious. Uh, now changing subjects, we've talked a little bit about like easier guests to deal with. How do you keep your composure with difficult guests? Actually, if you don't mind, uh, before we go to that question, because I wanted to go to the, the actual sphere that I. Oh yeah, oh, go yeah, for it. I forgot about that. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm so sorry, but um, yeah, don't worry about it. But it just like, to end that little that side, the, the, that other story. It just a lot of guests would say things like they'd, they'd be like. Is this me scary? And like, this would be just after I'd scared them in the queue line. I'm like, you that with the tutu, and they look. I run up to them. It got people so often, like, because they just didn't expect the guy to like cover the distance. That I'd be far away first, and then I close the distance when they turn their heads <laughs> and scare them. So right after I get a good <laughs> scream out of them, they're like, is this me scary? I'm like, I don't know. Does that that depends? Am I scary? <laughs> like, and they <laughs> laugh about it, you know. But I'm just like, yeah. But anyway, so uh, again, it was in the queue line. Um, this group of tourists, like Chinese tourists. They were all linking arms like a barrel of monkeys, just like, you know, this like... That's a popular thing at these things, man. They I all, see that a lot. Right, right. That it's a long yep. It was a fat come the line. I was like, ooh, I want that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want that. They were at the fright lane. They're kind of off to the side, you know, just waiting to go in. And there were there were 10 of them, just linking arms. And oh, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to get that one. I want that one. <laughs> so I'm coming from the queue line from the regular, like, the regular queue line. Yeah. And I'm like, so I'm coming low, and I'm like waiting for an opening. I'm like kind of like, you know... You know, like waiting, watching my prey. That, so, like, as the crowd opens up, I book it. I'm coming low. He's running at him as fast as I can. And I'm like <laughs> going toward their throats. And okay, like, eight of them drop to the ground. Yeah. And they're still linking arms. Like, Whoa. Like, they all fall, and the two people in front are still linking arms with all of them, and they start running, <laughs> and they drag the whole freaking line with them. Oh so, it's like, freaking a line of, like, of guests are just slithering away as they're linking arms. That was, like, that, that had to be my favorite. That's it's freaking, uh, yeah, because, like, I, okay, so I see those groups all the time at knots in the scare zones, and everyone's like, why do you guys do that? You know that's an easy target for them. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's an they easy just, target. And if one of you gets floored, chances are we're going to about to see a dog. Yeah, if one of you gets floored, you guys are all holding hands. You guys are all getting floored. It's just, yeah. it's just the it's, logic in it. I think those are some of our favorite scares to watch. But some of the floored ones, you kind of wonder, oh, my God, are you okay? <laughs> like, they hit the ground. Oh, hard. dude, we <laughs> saw one on closing night in <laughs> Ghost Town. Um, I don't know if you've ever met the uh, uh, hostel. He's a guy usually in a straight jacket in Ghost Town. Or it was like a blindfold. Um, he, we just had him on the show and one of the funniest scares I saw with him was um, on the closing night of, of Knott's, right in front of the Birdcage Theater, this kid was like backing up into this corner between like this, it's like a, what is it, like a cart? Like that wooden, the old style wagon? wagons? And the, 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 in between the wagon and the theater, and he was getting cornered, and he just got to the point where he's like, "No, no, no, screw this!" So the kid jumps over the rope, but then fucking trips on the rope and eats shit. <laughs> I just remember dying on the porch seeing that. I was like, "Oh my god, that kid just freaking ate shit, dude!" And I was like, "This is a guy who doesn't break character when he goes out. He oh my, doesn't. I don't know how he kept it together, but he did." <laughs> I would have lost. I, I'm All right, so uh, we talked. A little bit about you know some of your favorite moments here and favorite scares um, and you know they've been on a lighthearted note you know because obviously these are usually good guest interactions um, so on the on the opposite end how do you guys keep your composure for like bad you know those bad guests you know the ones that maybe they're not the best uh, there was a few actually um, I got shoulder checked one time and I got pinned between the wall oof, oof. and um, if you've ever scare acted like you know like you're you're drenched in sweat it's not the most pleasant thing um, and, and like that's one of the things like you don't really want to touch guests but sometimes they just do things and you can't really help it and I got pinned in between the wall and I was scaring the group and this guy was just he was like going ham like he was not having it he looked like he was having like a shit day and he straight up walked into me and shoulder checked me into the wall and and like things like that like if you let it get to you 
it will affect you for the rest of the night, and you, you can't let it. You can't let that happen. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, the rest of your scares, like it, the, the. What I'm trying to say is, like the rest of the people that come through, you're gonna neglect all of them from being scared yeah, and yeah. having as much fun because of the way you're acting. Okay. And if you brush it off and you scare the rest of the people and get good scares, then you're good. But if you let it affect you, it's really gonna damage like everyone's perspective when they go through the maze and be like, it wasn't that scary or they didn't do a good job or whatever. They were just standing there. I feel like that would like motivate me more to just, just get back at that. So yeah, like, so like when that happened, I'll tell you I was what, like, like, like... Some nights, like, well, actually I had like two bad, bad nights and yeah. I, I was just like, I was so over how the guests were acting, and so I turned that into like uh, an extra aggressive like demeanor toward guests, and like to go ham on the people who were gonna be receptive to it. You know, like oh my god, I'm so over. You know? <laughs> but yeah, like get really make them feel like I was gonna I was gonna actually inflict harm. You know, but yeah. So. Yeah, but that that was the most uh, challenging thing is getting people that walked through the maze that looked like they were ready to punch somebody. Or like they were just having the most terrible night of their their world. Yeah. And, like you paid to be here, and they walk through stone faced, stone cold. They just like they're not entertained. They're not laughing. They're not having fun. Yeah. Yeah. And like those were the challenge guests yeah, yeah, yeah. for me. Like I would personally, sometimes I would look at them and be like, they're not worth even bothering a scare. But then once in a while, I'd see one and I'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And like I would I would get a lot of like looking at me like what the fuck or you know like they would they'd be like who are you do you think you're scary or something so like there's a lot of comments and stuff that would be like eh. but every once in a while i get a good scare and it'd be like oh shit <laughs> like, dude you got me that was a good one and like that it it feels good when you get that sort of gratitude from a person that you think is gonna be like a total asshole yeah yeah like i, I like that we also, we also oh, did, did you, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um with uh let's see I my my defense to all of the the bad guests were that I could speak. That was my saving grace. <laughs> right, right. It was my saving grace. I wish grace. I could just oh, improvise. Oh man. Oh, it, oh uh, I got, I clowned on so many guests <laughs> who were, we thought they were funny. And look, the most common one we got, we do our thing, we go, Bleh, and their the response is, hi, hi, hi. Oh my god, I hate hi, those. Hi. Uh, and then so I I'd be like, all right. Another one I heard a lot too. Well, too. I like your I like costume. Your costume. I like your makeup. Yeah, I like you're your cute. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, are you single? It's like, will you marry me? It's like, but no. Or well, that's like, where I got Groot too. Like, you look like Groot. Like, okay, cool. It's like, yeah, I'm you and a million others, kid. Or I can see you. Like, <laughs> oh, cool, you're not blind. I can see you. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but, uh, so, so um, a lot of the time they'd be like, hi. And I'd, so I'd be like, if I had a dollar for every time I had a guest say hi, I'd have a lot of dollars. <laughs> and like the whole, like everyone with them would always laugh at them because it's like, oh hey, God. come up with something else, you know. <laughs> but um, uh, one of my favorites was this, 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 uh, you know, middle-aged guy is going through with his family in his like, in, a, in his like his plaid dress shirt, and he's just kind of like has this, I don't know, just this dirty look on his face. He's not there to have any fun. Yeah, yeah. And so whatever, I, I, I target their family and I'm going for them. And I do my whole stick, I run up to him and you know, I'm trying to scare him. I scare the family except for him. And uh, I'm just kind of <coughs> running around doing my thing and sweating and all that. And so the guy's walking into the maze and he's like, huh, look how hard this guy is trying. Like, look how hard this guy is trying. <laughs> And like basically saying like it wasn't working on him. Yeah, yeah. And so I followed him, and I was like, ha ha. And the the, the, the the and the ironic part is you have to pay for this. <laughs> and, like, and then everyone starts laughing at him. Like his family's laughing at him. I'm like, yeah, well, that's what's funny about this. You, you know? have to pay for this. And you, you're the one who's paying for this. Right, like right. I literally will tell him that. Like, and like same thing with like, I'll go after uh. a, a couple. And like I, um, I get the girl to turn around, and the guy's like holding her. He's like, "Hey, uh, bro, uh, no, no, he's right here. Don't, 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 don't turn around. Don't turn around. He's right here. He's trying to scare you now." And he's killing the scare. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's no fun. And he's just like, uh, "Get out of here. Get out of here." And I'm like, ah, oh, you know what's really funny is you're paying for both of your tickets. <laughs> and then like the girl starts laughing at him, and it's like, "Yeah, jokes on you, jerk." <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that that was my way around it. Is just being able to clown on them by saying, hey, you're not original. Hey, you, you, I, I, it's no skin off my nose if you're not having fun. Yeah. You're wasting your money. That's the scary part. I know. I, know. So, I was like, that's funny that you've done gas or something. Yeah. <laughs> you bought the, you bought the, the, the ticket. ticket. Me? I, 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 I had fun. 
That's what she. You know, you know how he got this guy on the show. Literally acknowledged how awesome my best is. Like when he's on the show. Yeah, man, I recognize. I was like, take my card. I was, I, I felt like the Joker lost his ears in my car, and then freaking just had his hand and took it, and then like, like, like that second. I'm the guy from Waxworks. Wax give me your, give me your card. card. What you want to talk about? <laughs> like, like, oh, dude, oh, we dude, freaking thought you were cool. cool. You want to be on our show? show. Sure. <laughs> So, well, let's go. Let's go to the guests. Uh, uh, yeah, we got, we got. So we went on, we Instagram, went on Instagram, Instagram. We asked, yes, we asked yes, our uh, guests, our our, 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 uh, uh, our fans, fans some questions. Uh, they have any questions for you guys. So a lot of these, these they can go for both because a lot of them, the way they were written out, is just for pretty much any guest can really answer really. So that's the fun part about it. Were there any people who were so scared they actually threw hands at you guys? Oh yeah. <laughs> that's like the part that's par for the course yeah. with scare acting like you you gotta expect you're gonna get hit that's even kind of what they brief us on when they're going uh, they're training us on like you know before we start the season especially with us being new at knots so like listen you gotta understand that it's gonna happen it's a flight response or fight or flight response and you're in their bubble so a lot of the time people are gonna throw hands and you have to distinguish when you think that's malicious or not so it happens enough like it, it's gonna happen to pretty much anybody yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, well, see, my ploy was if I got a good scare out of it, I didn't care if I got hit on the face. <laughs> <laughs> Take it as a compliment. Two or, two or three girls had really good, le like, mean left hooks. Like, <laughs> they just went, oh, boom! And I was like, you know what? Like, damn, that was a good punch. <laughs> like, and I'm you're also gonna wearing, you're going to get kicked out of the park, but damn, damn was that was a good punch. punch. <laughs> yeah, like, mind you, I'm, we I'm wearing the silicone mask, which is five pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I don't really feel the punches as much as, like, if I was just bare, like, boom. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of absorbs it. So, like, at the same time, I'm like, that hurts for, like, a couple minutes. But if it hurts through the silicone for a couple minutes, <laughs> I can't imagine Rather taking it, it when it was bare without face, it. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, okay, okay. I'm down with that, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of people, people that, that, that they just can't, like I said, they can't control what they do. And I think that's a big, big part of becoming one of these things. Because you, just have control. Control. Yeah, you so know you what know you're signing up for. It's like... Yeah. Uh, you keep your hands in your pocket if you know you're going to swing or something. <laughs> uh, just, uh, just to have them bound to their legs or something. Give them a straight yeah. leg or something. Man, um, this, I got punched in the throat. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Okay, it wasn't a full-on, like... Like punch in the throat, but I was able. Thankfully, when I get into their bubble, I back up immediately. So the guy throws a punch right as I'm backing up, so he kind of clips my neck. I'm like, but yeah. So, um, but yeah, I was like, you know, I came in really hot and just like, yeah, the guy was like, oh. But the thing is, he kept swinging after that. He was chasing me with his punches, Jeez, you know? and I was like, I backed up and I go, I go to guest control immediately. I'm like, hey, yo, watch these guys. They're they're throwing punches, yeah, and yeah. they were not even inside the maze yet. Yeah, yeah. But um. Actually, yeah, that's all I can really say about that situation. I'm not, I can't really. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. like, uh, but also a lot of a lot of girls like they, they're kung fu, they're 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 karate, whatever whatever <laughs> martial arts they're training. Like Miss, Mr. Miyagi must have thought them to wax on, wax off. Because seriously, I get in their bubble and I I go for their throat and they go, <laughs> and I'm like, very good. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Like, yeah, no, it was amazing. You're like, who's you're training like, you, man? And then I'd look at him, I'm like, wax on, wax on. <laughs> you're training very well, and I leave, oh, you know, so but funny. my God. And then, um, so yeah, sometimes, you know, I get into their bubble, and like, the, this older woman, like, I get in her bubble, she goes, like, like right on my head. <laughs> like, boom, and I'm like, oh, and then she's like, oh my God, I am so sorry. Like, oh, it's quite all right. I take it as a compliment. You know, it's like, you got to take it as a compliment. You, she was scared and just like, <laughs> popped me on the head. Yeah, she was, she was to say sorry. sorry. There's, oh, there's, there's, yeah. there's some people yeah. that, yeah. that won't even go that far. That that's true. Just yeah. like, yeah. like, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> yeah, right. Are the ones um, that are like, don't touch me when you didn't even touch them. It's like, but you like, realize that the ones that can't touch you. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right. like you get close enough, and they're just like, "Get away!" It's like, "What do you want me to do? You put, you came here to get scared. You want me to just stand here?" You're like, "If you're anything, anything, I'm doing job. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, hands, hands down, down favorite, favorite moment, moment during, during sea season. In or in or out of the maze. I think it's, I think just, it's just one long that that non season. season. I imagine probably on the job. Well, you can do on the job, job, off the job. You guys have some shenanigans with friends. Like, like during breaks or after work. The thing I love, like <laughs> I, I'd say outside of the maze first, is a thing that I notice is Knotts likes to do this thing where everyone gets together outside 
afterwards or prior like they just they have their little groups of friends and stuff and I thought it was really cool and sweet that they went bowling and they went to like I saw one night actually actually watched the like yeah I was like I'm gonna sleep by four in the morning I don't know how they have the energy after working because like literally you're working till like one or two in the morning and then they go out and have fun and then they do it all over again the next day so I'm like I don't know how y'all do it but when we went we were like let's just try it one time we went bowling and it was really fun oh yeah, oh, yeah. And, like all of the energy that i thought was not going to be there because i was dead like after i was like i'm just ready to sleep <laughs> and then we got into it and we went bowling and i had so much energy out of nowhere i'm like dude this is actually really fun like i'm glad we did this i think it's just think the, it's the fact just that, that you're around your friends, friends and all that positive, positive energy, energy afterwards and everybody, everybody is doing the same doing thing, the same thing, thing you're doing, doing. It's just, yeah. just, it brings that, bring that second wind back to you yeah that's another thing too is when there's good uh, guests walking through, like people who are into it, yeah. it's really it's like a drug. It's like it's really, you know, it just it, it it's, it's exhilarating, you know. Because like honestly, the the hardest people were just to, to scare in my opinion were pre pre scary. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was about them. They wanted to be there first, but they all were just like they just they just they, they didn't they looked like they weren't enjoying themselves. It was the weirdest thing. It was like, it was very difficult. Like, I was just they constantly. Just <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. yeah, but yeah, they were just like a lot of them were just kind of, but uh, those were tough. But like when you get scares from pre-shift people, it was actually really like it was like a goal. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. I, I would say in the maze though, like my favorite moment. Um, I I don't know what day it was, but just one of the nights. Um, in the laser room, there's an extended like exit to the left, and there's a little crawl space. Um, a lot of the times, I don't know why they don't have a blackout there, but a lot of the times people would come from the other room and just go straight out of the exit because they think that's the way to go. <laughs> they would see the laser and be intimidated by it, and they would all look at it just like, yeah, we're not going through there, and they would go the other way. And like, so, so it was kind of difficult, and my challenge was like, how do I get them to come this way and not break character? So I started doing this thing where I would crawl and like the laser goes all the way to the floor so like you can you can kind of have some space to like move around and stuff. So what I started doing was crawling on, on all floors and my mask and my, my claws, I have these big long fingers so it looks all creepy when I'm crawling. And like I would just crawl towards the guests like really slowly out of the fog, out of the laser and they would all, like there would be a line of like 12 people like trying to figure out where to go and like they're following each other like mama ducks and they're just like where do we go, Let's go. follow the train follow the leader because they're looking at the laser like uh-uh yeah yeah and they're like i would crawl out of it and like instead of like doing the whole finger thing like because because i tried that like a few times like come this way and they'd be like oh okay that's it but it got boring after a while so i'm like i started crawling on all floors and then last second, I would lunge, and they'd be like, oh my God. and then I'd jump up, and they'd be like, ah, and it'd scare like all 12 of them into the wall. It was the funniest shit ever. And then they'd be like, oh, and then I would disappear back into the cloud, and then scare them again, That's crazy. like two or three times. So it was the funniest moment for me. Like, and I think I think the laser room right before you went to like the, 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 little, the, little, the little nurse station. Yeah, like yeah, the little suffocating, yeah, yeah, claustrophobia, yeah, tunnel. That's, yeah, that's, that's what they're called, called, like, like Oh, that's, that's right. right. The, little, like, the little air balloon yeah, thing, yeah. the little butts. We're going through, uh, you're getting birthed again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you get done, you get done. Like, pressures on there. Yeah, right. Yeah. It goes from, like, a band to, like, the shining where, like, the old one's back back on. Everyone's there having a good time. There's a nurse there, and it's all bright. You go down that hallway, and it's... Like it looks, like it looks nice, nice and also stop, 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 and then she comes right through the door and right as I'm about to open it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the shit out of you. Uh, there was some pretty good scares in there. From what I heard, like every time people went through, they went through the nurses thing. And like to me, I'm so used to it at this point. I'm just like, it looks normal to me. Yeah. Like people would come from the laser room and I'd hear them going through. Ah! <laughs> like, what is this nurse doing? I kind of wanted to like just, just stand in there, there dude. and just watch. <laughs> I think because they, they, they don't go, they go through that creepy like, like, claustrophobic tunnel. tunnel. They don't expect someone oh, yeah. to die. You just think it's over at that point. It's just like there's still a bit more maze to go through. You know, the tunnel shift. Just all of a sudden, you're in this bright, creepy, like tiny nurse's office. Like, 
Yeah. But bravo to course. the nurses, because like yeah, if yeah. it was always just fun to hear screams after. Sound like, sound like, yeah, yeah. If, honestly, honestly, if, if they would have allowed us to, uh, I would love to just stay in the maze and in certain sections, just so I can get more better compilation footage. Because I feel like you only have one walkthrough. Sometimes the footage will be as great. And then and after, after, like, the like, freaking opening week, they're very strict on filming inside of mazes, 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 that's just how they are. Which, you know, Which, you know, know disrespect to I get it. They want to have their guests come surprised, and they want to have their guests, you know, walk through them. But it's like people like me who want to do, like, compilations and stuff. It's like, I feel bad that I don't have a lot of footage of, like, scare actors inside the mazes, rather than just the one video where, as a street, you go everywhere else. Like, off to the side and stuff. Which, sure, we can yeah. uh, give you their email, uh, like so you can like let them know ahead of time. Maybe they can work with you on. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. We really do. Because really cool. I think they did. They did. They did, they did that they did one that documentary. One I don't know if you guys yeah, seen it. It's called a uh, Origins, Origins Sliders, Sliders of Ghost Town. Ghost Town. No. It's on YouTube. It's, on YouTube. it's, 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 it's a slider documentary of how it all got started at Knott's and everything. I just watched it recently. It's pretty good. Um, another character that's yeah, another character that's famous in Ghost Town. He's actually featured in that. Um, in that little yeah, movie. movie, we had him on the yeah, podcast. He was in America. I don't know if you guys heard of him. Oh, yeah. America, that guy, that guy is just something just else. else. That guy's awesome. Guy's awesome. Um, the, a lot of them are something else. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And, that, and that that brings that me brings to my, me next, to my question. next question. How do you guys, How do you guys get, prepared get prepared every night? Every you guys listen to music, sit in silence. You guys just kind of get your mind. How do you guys get prepared every night to get character? Are we on this? We got about three minutes. Oh, it's seven minutes. Actually, do you mind if I back up again real quick? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. As far as the, like, favorite moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, uh, I'm yeah, sorry to do that. Don't but worry, don't worry. He has so many more. He's got no, 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 no. I mean, it's like, honestly, it was hard to really distinguish because, like, the Tyler story was a really good story. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I had a lot of moments like that with kids and stuff. Like, I had a lot of fans in the line because of how I was, like, approaching. Like, I would scare people, but also pump them up and that kind of thing. Kind of get them ready, excited for the maze. Definitely. Even to a point where my supervisor was giving me, like, waxworks buttons and stickers. So my thing was, like, if I really scared somebody and badly, like, if they'd spill their beer or if they someone would cry, I'd be like, here's an honorary <laughs> waxworks button, you know? Just like, you know, like, you, you, know, you awesome. make this event fun, here you go, enjoy. But, like, um, one, of, one of, among the many good moments, like, we all have, it's, like, uh, one of the funniest ones, I would say, if I could just supplement yeah. Yeah. Uh, best for funny, was... Uh, these shoes, these non-slip shoes that I got, um, I tie them really tight, but just they were they're slippery. So like I dart out of the maze one night and I ran out of one of my shoes and uh, it was just gone. I'm like, oh boy. Um, I ran out of my shoe one time too. Yeah, so I, I so my shoes, just, I don't know where it is, and I'm trying to stay in character, you know, and and I, I scare the people and I'm looking around and I'm like walking like with a limp because you know I'm uneven and I've got a little flat tire going on and I'm like oh god in my mind I'm like where the hell's where the hell's my, where the hell's my shoe <laughs> so I dart into the maze like down the hallway and thinking that maybe a guest took it because that would be funny yeah. you know they, I'm like so I'm like I run up to them and they all scream and I'm like have you seen a shoe have you seen my shoe you know so then I go back outside I'm like Anyone out here seen my shoe? <laughs> and like, you know, the, the maze, the maze, uh, or the guest control is laughing. <laughs> the guests are laughing. <laughs> and finally I find it like under like the, one of the bars, like one of the dividers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank God. So I go in the <laughs> dark and put my shoe back on. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I found, I found my, found my shoe. shoe. Yes, right, and everyone's clapping now. Oh yeah, yeah. That, was pro that was a really funny one. Like, like so you, how, you literally ran out of your shoes? Like the shoe just went in flew or what? Right, right, so I, yeah, I was running and just, yep. just came <laughs> just came right out of it. That's hilarious. Because I push off and I'm like, I'm like basically sprinting toward them, so I'm like on my tiptoes pushing off. It's like whoop, whoop, whoop. Yep, there it is. All right, what's next on top is? It was, how do you guys get into character every night? Is there like music you listen to? Do you sit in silence? Reading a book? Jumping jacks? What, what is it? Push-ups, Push I don't know. Different things. I've heard it all. <laughs> now, honestly, like, the first four weeks, like, um, well, like, I, I deal with social anxiety and stuff, so the first four weeks for me were just, like, alone, like, that was my quiet time, just sitting peacefully, like getting ready. And then I would go into the maze and then do the same thing, just like stand, kind of get used to familiar with the room and I'd walk around and like try to see where all the exits were and all the crawl spaces and all the ways I could get around and scare people. Yeah. And uh, I, can, I found a lot of good spots that the supervisors were like, a lot of people don't scare out of there, so that's, that's cool. 
so I'm like, oh yeah, well, the, that's because I had like plenty of time to walk around and like play in the room before it was dark, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when I can see. To get stuff, to, to kind of get that mindset. Yeah, that mindset yeah so right, like, you know. they, they told us to do that in the beginning, like yeah. familiarize yourself with the room and stuff so you know the maze. Um, I didn't get to do that with the whole maze, but I got to do it with a fair amount of it, so like I was able to yeah. run around everywhere. And like, it's, it's so much harder when it's dark and you can't see anything. But like when there's light and you can see where all the little things are, all the stuff you can trip on and fall over. And still, like I fell a few times. I was like, oh, I didn't expect that thing to, to be there. Like, oops. <laughs> but yeah, like just getting quiet time. And then after that, once I started like talking to people and making friends and stuff, like we would just hype each other up and like we would all get ready and then we'd go into the maze together. Like, like we got this one. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, it's always best to hype everybody up. Uh, that's, that's fun. Because I've heard like, different people getting rooms and then hype each other up when they do like stretches and stuff like to get ready for the night and yeah. there's like a little hype thing that goes there you know, just kind of getting everybody ready but like when I when we talk to people on the, who did Ghost Town when they heard like the opening audio cues to like start the event and they heard that coming down the fog and that got that pumped and stuff I, I, I don't know what about you Corey what's something you do to uh, it was kind of all over the place. Uh, well, kind of go off of what Grant was saying with like everyone kind of hyping each other up. I would start this tribal dance, oh, nice. and like that's where I got clap trap because I started going, you know, clapping really loudly. Like you, you like, gotta show. Them. Uh, <laughs> you really want to? I mean, it's gonna. Help you. I mean, like. <laughs> it was like yeah, oh yeah. It's really loud. So like I'm like just slamming my my hands together and and like hurting everyone's ears, but also kind of like, everyone's like, oh my God, Jesus. Like, <laughs> too many decibels, dude, like, too many decibels. So, but like, I start going, uh, 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 and I start screaming, like, you know, <laughs> like, and then everyone starts going, <laughs> and then we start doing like, our, throwing our hands up and just down and up and just clapping and hopping up and down, and everyone's just eventually just doing this thing, going around. Rain dance yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That sounds Didn't fun. get any rain dark. I know. Um, <laughs> Uh, we got a little bit yeah, of that. Yeah, take that streets. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so like, we would, uh, you know, be like a tribal dance. But that's where I got clap trap because I was just clapping so loudly. Like, we're going to call you clap. And then someone's like, no, clap trap. I'm like, yeah, hey, right, clap trap. There it is. And then <laughs> we, they had a little, everyone's applauding. And I was like, oh, cool, I guess that's my hot name. But I kind of wish it was bathrobe because that was like my thing. Like in between sets, I come off, like I put my all into it and I sweat, I just sweat so much. Something I heard a lot in the queue line is like, you know, it's almost impossible not to kind of brush shoulders with people from time to time. Yeah. But I go by some people, <laughs> or they go by me, and they say, oh, he's so wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, so I'd be moist, like, or, you know, just wet by, uh, by the time I come off set. So I have a bathrobe, yeah. and like, I just put that sucker on over my costume. It helps dry it up. I feel like, I feel great, you know. <laughs> I'd actually recommend that to scare actors because when you sweat, when you're working your ass off and you sweat and you go, you know, back off set or you're, you're exposed to the elements, it gets really cold. Yeah. So like with a bathrobe, it like, yeah. I mean, actually, there's nothing worse than putting a wet costume on after your break. It's, oh, the, yeah. it's disgusting. It's, yeah. it's like, who wants to put a wet costume on when it's already cold out? That it sucks. Fun. So yeah, bathrobe makes it all okay. That's yes, like I know, I know a lot of people, <laughs> they just wear masks that just throw that off and just stay in costume. Put something on over it so they don't spill anything or anything on it. Just so they, can, they don't have to change back, but a bathrobe thing sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, I didn't really see anyone else with a bathrobe. That's why I kind of hope. It's a great idea. I, I wish bathrobe stuck because, like, I, I, I don't know. But that I, I clap track, I guess that'll do. Of course, but, of course backstage is like you have to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it really. Yeah, these guys have like little pipe and everything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, like tweets. No, yeah, it's like it's it makes a world of difference. Like comfort is a huge thing. And that's the thing. Early on in the season, like I wasn't really, I didn't really know anybody. It was a brand new element. I was out of my element. Yeah. So like. Um, honestly, I took fat, fat power naps. I would just kind of like get my little roller case, get in my bathrobe, and just kind of like, you know, <laughs> That's the just, best, yeah, dude. just take fat naps in between. And it started Sometimes from, you have to. Yeah, I mean, it started from fat naps to then, you know, doing push ups and standard, and then doing just clapping. And we started singing uh, Hakuna Matata. Nice. And uh, like, you know, Moana, things like that. And, yeah. Um, uh, the banana boat song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the daylight come and we won't go home. And everyone's yeah, just singing. I mean, singing was a good thing. Yeah. But also, just as far as soundtracks, like, dude, Dragula, like Rob Zombie. Yes. Yeah, you, you can't go on with that one. That'll pump anybody up. Yeah. Um, Dragula. I also went on a binge, like, listening to uh, 
uh, the soundtrack from Zombies Ate My Neighbors from okay. that old uh, Sega uh, Nintendo, or it was on the Sega Genesis, but also Super Nintendo. Oh. Here's this like shoot 'em up zombie game. Yeah, that's some really zany music. I actually, play we were playing it on the way to uh, on our ride one day. I was like, you dude, you gotta check out the soundtrack to this game. I like that. That's yeah, cool. it's really cool. And the, so I would play that on my breaks just to kind of get in that headspace because, yeah. like, you know, it's it, ha it it plays to like old school horror movies, like mm -hmm. zany kind of like almost campy horror movies. And I'd play that on break and also play it in my head as I'm going in into set and help me carry that Halloween vibe out to the guests and stuff. All right. Yeah. Um, if you, if I may suggest one for next season, the Doom soundtrack. Dune. Doom. Oh, Doom. Oh, Doom. oh yeah. That's, oh, that's yeah. a good one. game that they just came out, or the one that just came out recently. The last game just came out. The soundtrack was hard. Yeah. There's like one scene where it's just, it's a slow build up, and then just, and then just like, I'm just like, oh my god. That's awesome. It was like anyone's getting pumped up there listening to this song. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to look that up later. I'm going to bust out my walk, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you, I mean, because I know you guys, you play Switch and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Doom, you should try to get that on the Switch. Dude. Yeah, yeah. It's just the you're playing the entire game, and the entire game is just metal as you're playing, killing <laughs> people from hell and stuff. And I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. Fuck yeah! So I was like, sure. you put two of the best things together, killing and freaking metal. <laughs> yeah, no. I was like, in a video game, I'm sold. Okay. Done. All right, I think this is one of our final questions here. Uh, what would your advice be to those who may be one day aspiring to be not scare actors? Uh, um, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that like if, if you're looking to be a scare actor um, think of <laughs> how you've walked through the mazes and what inspired you in the first place like why you go to these events what makes it fun and then see how you can like picture yourself in the opposite being the one scaring people if you love pulling pranks if you love scaring people outside on the daily basis like aside from Halloween like if that's just something that you love to do just pulling pranks and being funny and, and scary and whatnot like e even if you're just an intimidating person like that could be a great character for Nas as well um, and a lot of people like there's so many individuals that I, I saw at Knott's that were standouts like they stood out of the crowd they were all unique their own persona their individual identities were created and like like you can build a character from literally who you are as a person like if you think that you're a special person and you like you love being creative and having fun like just do it like have go ham be yourself a lot of people were exactly who they wanted to be and they didn't have to pretend to be something else or try really hard to be something that they weren't yeah um <coughs> yeah, I mean, be, be prepared to put your heart into it, uh, everything you've got. Um, something that people don't realize is that scare acting is definitely like a marathon. Mm -hmm. um, you got to be prepared to be with it for the long run. And a lot of people will put a bunch into the first weekend, not realize how strenuous that is. And they'll, they'll putter out, they'll burn out after the first weekend and they, they can't do it. A lot of people drop out after the first weekend, second weekend. Um, it requires a lot of, uh, you know, uh, energy and just being consistent. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend, if, especially if people want to do streets, just limber up. Oh, and stretch. Yeah, stretch, well, stretch. Like stretch, stretch. Yeah, Before, after, stretch. like always. During, um, I would stretch during. Yeah, like yeah between sets period. and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like if you want to do streets, um, just limber up and, uh, you know, work on your <laughs> cardio and just be ready to uh, to do it for, be, be there for the marathon because it's, yeah. So it's very, it's, it's very physically taxing. It is. Yeah. It's fun, but yeah, it, it yeah. is a workout yeah. for sure. Yeah. And the final question I will say, if you guys can choose any <coughs> other event to be a scare actor after one day, which one would you choose? Um, I think Queen Mary would be kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. I, I've, I've always wanted to do something there. Being on a boat, just it sounds eerie. Just being on the water and being on a boat, just going through the mazes on the boat, dude, would be eerie. Because you know that boat's history is haunted. Yeah, it's like there's the actual water. real like that's what I love. Like I love really haunted places. Yeah. That are like I want to see a real ghost. Yeah. So paranormal, they put me in there. Like I had no idea what it was to begin with, and I was like, this is actually my first time like going through scare like Halloween. No way. What is it? Not scary farm. I've never been before. Yeah. So this is my first experience. So I kind of wanted to like see it as a guest first, but I didn't really get that. Like I just kind of went into it. I was like, Let's just go in. Let's Boom. Go. Done. See how it is from 
this perspective, so I didn't really get to see the guest perspective. Yeah. But yeah, like just scary stuff. Like all of the whole maze is about ghosts and demons and stuff. And yeah. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> this is everything I love. Like, yes. <laughs> they put me in a perfect maze. I had no idea what it was, but yes. <laughs> what about you, Court? Um, I've always been curious about uh, Haunted Hayride. All right. Uh, just because it started off as a very <laughs> small thing and it's starting to garner a lot of buzz. Yeah. And also, Griffith Park, that whole area has its own kind of like. It's crazy energy, even like you know, That's like true. ghost energy, just like being around the observatory and just that whole area. It's like you know, the abandoned zoo. Yeah, there's just a lot of history there. I think it's actually where the hayride took us, okay, to be honest. It took us through the abandoned zoo. That's yeah. cool. I don't know if it took us through it, I know it took us like towards the entrance. Because I mean, there's a lot of scenes. Remember that, like, there's that one part where that girl jumped off that rock. Yeah, scene that looked like something that'd be on the zoo, maybe. Hey, I don't know. I don't know. The thing is, I actually haven't been there as a guest either, yeah. but I've heard a lot of good things. And just honestly, without there being a hayride, just, you know, going ghost hunting and things like that, just a lot of like just folklore around those hills. There's just something creepy and just um, innately creepy about that place. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, and also, yeah, again, like, it's gotten a lot of good feedback from guests. Um, it's a force to be reckoned with for sure. As far, I mean, I'm hearing a lot about Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. I'm uh, hearing a lot about Hayride, and it's really nice to see that other events are rising to the, <coughs> excuse me, rising, rising to the occasion, because, um, you know, like, with Horror Nights, like, for, okay, first of all, you know, Knott's was one of the first uh, of its kind, and yeah. really, like, the, it, it was a trendsetter, it Can started a whole doors, movement, yeah. right, and, it, and that, that for that reason, it'll always have the number one place in my heart, yeah. and, you know, Horror Nights came out and kind of did its thing, but now there are other really good quality events coming out and I feel like putting things into perspective and that's all I really say about that um, um, but yeah not being uh, I'd say top contender there yeah. I think you uh, I can see you working uh, I can see the third working on board Reggie yeah really? especially you guys having uh, good imp uh, improvisation skills um, <laughs> we're gonna have him on tomorrow and he's such a cool guy where's he at? he was at Hayride oh cool and he right. played a character named Reggie his name's real name's AJ. We call his, his character name is Reggie. Oh, cool. But we interact as bad guy for like 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Just yeah. because, like, th that was the thing I like. And that's a, that's what I'm a sucker for. I love interaction. So if you interact with me and you bring the lore of the whatever I'm going through or whatever I'm walking through in life, like, that really, like, makes the event for me. And this event was nothing but that. They that's had cool. characters walking around in the main area. They all were interacted. They all told the story of what was going on. Because essentially, it was the story of this place called Midnight Falls. They were stuck in 1985 on Halloween night. Oh wow! And someone put a curse on it. And then you start to you start to unravel what's going on through the mazes, through the hayride, um, and through all the people, the townspeople. So it, it was such an interactive event. And like I said, we spent like at least 45 minutes to an hour just talking to all the characters to get the story, and then eventually led us to the mazes. And such a it's such a fun event, and. Uh, yeah, I could definitely see you working there. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I love that, by the way. Like, the whole stories and stuff. Yeah. Like, at Knott's specifically. Like, well, now they're, they're really trying to introduce that at Knott's now. Oh, yeah. They gave it's us all character sheets this time. Yeah. Like, they want you to get into the headspace of each character to have a whole story, backstory, their yeah. wants, like, like, their desires or things they dislike, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's really in-depth now. Well, and I didn't know that. Was, yeah. Would you want to talk about your characters in? Because that's really cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, mine, the Soul Eater is basically like, uh, I don't know if you guys seen Stranger Things, yeah. but uh, the Hellhounds, or, or what do they call the them? Demodogs. Demodogs. Yeah. That's basically what my character was, is a demigod. Yeah. Um, supposed to be walking on all fours, snarling, growling. Um, our intention is to bring people into hell, so we got to swipe and grab at them. And it's kind of hard because you can't touch the guests, but you know, you get the idea. Like when yeah. you, they, they give us these long claws and stuff, so like it's really fun out of the laser, like just trying to pull them into hell, and like that's our job. We're like yeah. the gatekeepers. Now that makes a lot more sense. Now. Yeah, just like going into like what you think is a peaceful, you're out there, and then all of a sudden that evil just flips on you, and it's like yeah. your own personal hell. And we're supposed to travel in packs, which is really interesting because they had me solo for yeah. the longest time, but on my break periods, like. When the when my replacements would come in yeah. and the room would be full of like three of us or four <laughs> of us, that's when it was fun oh, because the laser room like with one of us it's cool but with three or four of us in there scaring all at the same time, <laughs> they they had no idea like the people walking through were just like, 
oh my god, because they would see one and like, it's over there, it's over there, it's over there, and then like two of them would come out of nowhere, and they'd be like, oh, whoa! It's like, I don't know, it's just so much fun when there was more than one. Oh yeah, because you got people on one side, people on the other side. Yeah, so, you get so like tag teaming, and, and any room in the maze actually, tag teaming was so much fun. Oh, like bet. working with all the other characters, yeah. it was great. What about you, Corn? Um, so... Question, what was the question? Oh uh, no, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm having a massive brain fart right now. <laughs> um, we are uh, talking about character vibes. Right. Yeah, the yeah, there you yeah, go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I have those all the time. I mean, trip. I have them all the time. Um, so, uh, yeah, so for our character, or well, it's kind of complicated for me because I was originally a sculptor. Yeah. So basically, I'm looking at every guest as an opportunity, as uh, some some uh, aesthetic that I can add to my art. Yeah. Because I created the, the centipede the, yeah. with, like, the... 40 heads, the, the torso is all stacked on top of each other. Yeah, oh yeah, right here. They, yeah, they sent yeah. a Pete right here. I think, I think it was awesome. awesome. But yeah, oh man. So, um, you know, I would be like, I'd be fascinated with people's bone structure. That's something I said to people a lot. Ah, <laughs> oh, you have fascinating bone structure. <laughs> like, you'd be a perfect addition to my to my, my creation, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, so, um, I'm constantly looking for new clients, you know, looking for new heads. I'd say, I'd say to the guests, ah, oh, fresh victims, I mean patrons. It's like, we're looking for new heads. Any takers? Yes? I know, stuff like that. You know, make them laugh and stuff. But yeah, like, so, I'd, I'd constantly be looking for, 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 yeah, you know, inspiration for my art. Yeah. I'd be, you know, basically kind of a mad scientist, <laughs> just going crazy, you know. Um, also, I worked under the curator, technically. Yeah, yeah. So, as obsequious as I was to him, and like, I, I, I was uh, loyal to him, I also secretly envied the curator. I thought I was better at what I did. So like, Right, exactly. Yeah. Like a love hate, like kind of like almost like a you appreciate for what he does, but at the same time you think you're better. You think you can do better. Exactly. Like I could take over this museum. I, honestly, I think I'm the heart of this museum. Yeah. And uh, my art is better. I can do it better. That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, That's kind so of cool. you're driven by by my loyalty, but also madness toward my art, and also just wanting to be better than the curator. But you know, so I'm constantly at odds with myself, kind of. Just driving myself mad. Yeah. And just. Yeah. Well, and I like how you took that to the front. Like, you still stayed with that character. <coughs> to, I'm still looking for people for my, my next project or to add on to my project. Because you could have went to the front and just completely designed the character if you wanted to. But you took the character that you had inside, played with it, and Frankenstein it more in the, in the front so you can not only interact with guests, but keep to the lore of that maze. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which I think is awesome. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. Uh, it was an awesome surprise that we even got someone from Paranormal. So that's one more maze added to the uh, Character Appreciation Month that we can uh, thank. Um, do you guys want to plug any social medias in that people can follow you guys on? Or anything um, you guys have? You can follow me on Instagram, Mr. Brandon underscore Lewis. All right. Um, yeah, uh, my Instagram is sweet, uh, letter N as in Nancy, Sora, sweet and Sora. Nice. That. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. We really thank you for coming off this character appreciation month. Thank Here you for having us. Hey, thank no you. problem. We uh, we decided to do this. It was like I always say, started with four people, then it branched out to a bunch. So we're glad to have everyone we got. We're thankful to everyone who was very on board with this uh, since the beginning. We're thankful for you guys who not only go after night after night, blood, sweat, and tears. This ain't an easy job to do, and you guys go out there and put 110 percent. Me and you, me and Sammy don't look at you guys as characters, we look at you guys as our heroes. Because you guys go out there night after night bringing nightmares to life. Not a lot of people can accomplish that and we really appreciate you guys for that. And we do it for you guys. Yeah. And you guys give us that energy to continue on. Yeah. It makes it all worth it. And we have such a great time. Nas, we've said time after time again, it's been our favorite event this season. And we can't wait to see what's to come next season. From everyone Same. we've talked to, to uh, just what's to come maze wise what's to come scare zone wise there's always something new coming to these events which drives us back to come back year after year so thank you guys for that we appreciate you guys so much and uh, keep up with the uh, with the scary business because in, in the words of monsters inc we scare because we care yes yeah. absolutely that's been kind of a model for the nights of art of this uh, season for the character appreciation we scare because we care yeah um Make sure to follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Four and on Twitter at Knights of Four to keep up with what we're doing uh, video-wise, um, what we're going to be going to anywhere. Um, of course, follow us on if you guys are feeling extra generous, follow us on Patreon, 
we have a Patreon of the tier from a dollar all the way up to twenty dollars. Um, and then of course subscribe, like, <laughs> comment. I know the characters love reading uh, amazing, nice comments that you guys leave them. Yes. So make make sure to do that, and we will see you guys on the next episode. Peace.